Picture this. It's 2005 and you're on your way to the movie theater. Wearing jeans under dresses is fashionable and Holla Back Girl by Gwen Stefani is the song that all the cool girls listen to. You're only six years old and you're not old enough to be allowed to listen to that song, so you're doing what all the cool kids your age do instead. Heading out to see the hot new movie, The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl on a night out with your family. When the movie starts, you're starting to understand why this movie is popular. There's a boy with gills, a girl with pink hair, and an alternate dimension Waluigi. Your six-year-old mind is blown. But that's not all. Only 20 minutes in, and these noun-based superheroes are now in the real world, come to Earth in a shark-shaped rocket ship to save the day. These 13-year-olds mean business and will cement your idea of what cool kids are in your brain for years to come. But this groundbreaking movie only gets better as the main characters board their very practical shark rocket, strap themselves in, and a flashing sign tells them to put on their also very practical glasses. Except this sign isn't just for them, because you've got a paper pair of Lava Girl glasses of your very own that you're now sliding on and experiencing the wonders of 3D film for the first time. This 3D takes the movie to the next level. The shark ship whizzes just past your head. The flawless 2005 CGI slime just barely misses your movie theater seat. These glasses make you look the superhero part, and the movie's 3D immersion does all the rest. Okay, so I guess what I thought was cool as a six-year-old is some of the cheesiest stuff I've ever seen now. <laughs> Despite some iconic scenes and Jacob from Twilight in a shark suit, it's clear to me that one of the main reasons I thought this movie was so amazing as a kid is because of the 3D element. Shark Boy and Lava Girl is one of the first movies I can remember seeing in theaters, and it's mainly thanks to these fashionable blue and red glasses right here. But in the same way that jeans under dresses hasn't yet resurfaced as a trend, the explosive fad of 3D in culture and media also hasn't been relevant for over a decade now. Although 3D, which stands for three-dimensional if you were wondering, may seem like a more modern creation, the first movie to be shown to an audience in 3D was the 1922 film The Power of Love. A format called Anaglyph let the audience see the movie like they'd never seen another before by watching through special glasses that worked with the film strips the movie was shot on. And in the same year, the red and blue Anaglyph format was produced and the classic 3D glasses were born. 3D wasn't widely used in film because it took more time and resources, and after all of that effort, it wasn't received with much enthusiasm. Audiences liked the novelty of the idea, but it wasn't seen as much more than that. A creative gimmick that wasn't as viable or enjoyable for regular movie watching. 3D films would continue to stay stuck in this view of the public for decades, coming and going as a neat idea, but never fully expanded upon or commercialized. There were 3D booms in the 50s, 70s, and 80s, but again, the trend never fully seemed to stick. The 50s, particularly from 1952 to 1954, are even regarded as the golden era of 3D, but Shark Boy and Lava Girl still wouldn't be released for decades, so there was clearly still a long road ahead for the 3D trend. Horror movies in particular were popular to shoot in 3D. Movies from the 50s like It Came From Outer Space and Creature From the Black Lagoon used creative framing for certain scenes to give the audience a more immersive experience. By the 80s, more movies were being made with the purpose of being marketed as 3D experiences, releasing with the 3D built right into the title. Amityville 3D, Friday the 13th Part 3, and Jaws 3D were all released in the early 80s as scary movies that come to life right before your red and blue eyes. Pretty convenient that there were so many horrors and thrillers that had third installments to work 3D into their titles. These movies, along with other 3D releases of the time, did also have regular 2D releases in theaters, but part of the draw of these three cools was the terror of the monster reaching out to you directly and bringing the horror beyond the screen. Also in the 80s, IMAX began creating non-fiction films in 3D for educational purposes, showing mostly at places like museums and planetariums. IMAX made it a point to be mathematically correct with their 3D features, which helped a lot with eye fatigue and pain that most 3D showings would usually cause audience members. IMAX screens were also typically much bigger than regular theaters, which offered a more immersive experience. Although this resurgence of the trend of 3D movies in the 80s didn't last for too long, when they eventually became popular by the early 2000s, the visual gimmick of audience-facing scenes and shots also accompanied the returning fad, and it wasn't just for horror movies anymore. 
This of course brought us such groundbreaking scenes as a shark ship flying right at you and various shots of CGI goop hovering just in front of your face. There are only so many ways to shoehorn 3D into a movie's title though, so many movies that weren't threequels or just otherwise wanted a more regular release title opted to keep it out of the movie's name. That isn't to say though that there weren't still plenty of movies centered around their 3D-ness and with accompanying shots to further draw in an audience. I specifically remember watching Journey to the Center of the Earth with Brendan Fraser in 2008 and feeling wowed when he gargled after brushing his teeth and spit right at the camera. I don't remember much else of this iteration of the movie either, so clearly the gimmick of 3D and 3D-oriented scenes seemed to make a lasting impression on me. It wasn't just me though. The amazing feat of 3D was becoming increasingly popular. It was around the start of the 2010s that polarized 3D began being popularized too, which swapped out the red and blue glasses of old with new fully plastic glasses that more resembled sunglasses. Although they were intended to be recycled and reused, it was pretty common for people to forget to throw their glasses in the specified recycling bin, resulting in a lot of these ending up in the trash. And I can't touch on these glasses without also mentioning the trend of popping out the lenses and turning these into what a lot of tween girls would call nerd glasses. For whatever reason, suspenders, mustaches, and nerd core were trendy at the time, so a lot of people capitalized on the opportunity to make free nerd glasses of their own. If you saw a movie in 3D around 2010 to 2012, you probably did this yourself, or at least saw everyone else doing it around you. When Avatar, the highest grossing film for nearly a decade after its release, came out in 2009 and showed in 3D, this gave a huge boost to the popularity of 3D. Not only were more movies being released in 3D, but in 2010, the 3D trend went to the next level with the invention of 3D home TVs. The first TVs with 3D capabilities were meant to be used with 3D glasses, but not long after, there were TVs being made that could be used without special glasses, which is a lot more convenient, especially considering some glasses made by TV manufacturers could cost $50 and up per pair. On these technologically advanced TVs, you could watch specially adapted 3D Blu-rays, or for regular watching, there were content-specific channels that only aired media in 3D. Otherwise, there were sometimes 3D specials made of certain events or shows that would be shown on regular TV channels. TVs weren't the only pieces of technology that got a 3D upgrade either. A 3D camcorder was made by Fujifilm in 2010, and the Nintendo 3DS came out in 2011. Both of these were new ways to experience and interact with 3D content. The video camera didn't gain too much popularity, but as the 3DS was the next installment in the line of Nintendo's handheld consoles, it pretty quickly gained a cult following. That isn't to say that the players liked it for its 3D element though. The 3DS came with a switch on the side of the screen to turn the 3D display on and off, and as far as I've heard, pretty much everyone played with the switch indefinitely turned off. I got a 3DS myself around 2013 and still have it and sometimes play to this day. I can confidently say that I've used the 3D feature for probably less than an hour total since 2013. For the 3D to be viewable without special glasses, the screen has to be held at a certain distance and angle while playing, which isn't really ideal for most players who just want to catch Pokemon from the comfort of their beds. And even when the 3DS did have 3D turned on and was used at the exact right distance, the result was still, unfortunately, underwhelming. It did look as though you could reach your hand into the screen, but for long-term playing, the effect eventually gave most people, myself included, a bit of a headache. And while the gimmick is an interesting idea, it didn't really enhance gameplay or immersion at all, and so most people's 3D switches stayed permanently in the off position unless you accidentally bumped it while playing. So as far as home 3D experiences went, 3D TVs were the more popular option as far as actually using their 3D features. Despite the hype over having 3D in the home though, these TVs didn't really take off either. In addition to any glasses needed for viewing costing extra, the 3D TVs themselves also cost, expectedly, much more than a regular TV. Not to mention that if a 3D movie was released on Blu-ray, you would need both the 3D Blu-ray version and a special 3D Blu-ray player for all of the content to be compatible and actually play on your TV. And as for the specially available 3D channels, they could only be accessed with a 3D-enabled cable or satellite box. 
And if that wasn't bad enough, the selection was actually pretty limited, with most being country-specific and only a couple channels being available worldwide. By 2013, just a few years after the rise in popularity of 3D TVs, most broadcasters stopped providing 3D channels and programming, leading to the downfall of the TVs altogether. But there were still 3D movies in theaters, right? That's the way they were intended to be viewed, after all. There were plenty of movies still being released in 3D, but they weren't much like the 3D films from almost a decade before. Instead of Jason reaching right out for the kill or Brendan Fraser spitting on you, movies shown in 3D were now largely just regular movies that happened to seem a little closer to your face. Movies like Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 and The Avengers, both largely anticipated films, were released in theaters in both 2D and 3D. However, Harry Potter only had 43% of viewers watch in 3D, and The Avengers had even less at 32%. By 2012, the fast fad was slowly dying out again. Following the trend of the 3DS and 3D TVs, a lot of people stopped actively searching for 3D and just wanted a more regular, less eye-straining experience. One of the main reasons that 3D came and went so quickly in the 2000s was arguably due to oversaturation. For a trend to survive, there of course have to be avenues for consumers to be able to access whatever it is that's popular. So tons of 3D movies and the rise of 3D devices did make sense to an extent, but it didn't do any favors for the longevity of the craze. Sure, it's cool at first, but after you're done watching Juni Cortez duel with an off-brand lightsaber in Spy Kids 3D, the wow factor sort of lessens with each new 3D-oriented scene you watch. Not to mention all the movies that were shown in 3D just for the hell of it and didn't even offer any in-your-face action. It's no wonder that audiences quickly got over always having to view their movies with special glasses on. On a similar note, while I thought that Sharkboy and Lava Girl was peak entertainment as a kid, when I watch this movie now, it seems sort of silly to have to sit through a screen that tells an audience over 15 years later to put on their non-existent 3D glasses. All of the scenes that did make 3D movies cooler just seem strange or offbeat when watching it regularly. It's a little too close to breaking the fourth wall, which is rarely attempted by any movies that aren't going for a cheesy or comedic effect. And I feel like these movies relied a little too heavily on these gimmicky shots whether in 3D or not. Take the horror movies for example. If it weren't for 3D, these scenes where the monster or whatever scary element is reaching towards the screen wouldn't seem as scary without special glasses on, which I think makes them pretty cheap. It's similar to a low-budget horror movie using too many jump scares. Low effort writing to force the audience to react. A well-written scene or creative directing can achieve the same result, but jump scares and 3D explosions are generally easier. Another huge part of modern 3D's downfall is how expensive it was. Movies that were shown in 3D were more expensive than 2D versions, and so without a movie that actually benefited from being shown in 3D, the extra cost of the already rising price of movie tickets just wasn't worth it to most people. I remember being annoyed when I'd want to see a movie in theaters but could only find a 3D showing. Why would I pay $5 extra just to get barely any benefit and probably a headache too? 3D TVs were also not only expensive, but were released around a bad time for their longevity in general. In 2009, the US had just implemented the DTV transition, which changed all over-the-air TV broadcasting from analog to digital. This had millions of Americans between 2007 and 2009 buying new HD TVs to meet the new requirements or analog to digital converters so that they could keep their older analog TVs working just a little bit longer. All of this means that by the time 3D TVs were introduced in 2010, most people didn't want to buy a new and expensive TV when they had already bought one just a few years earlier, or they were at the very least still just trying to keep up with all the broadcasting changes of regular TV and didn't have the energy to be involved with 3D on top of it all. As of 2022, 3D movies and media have mostly tapered off, but there still exists a handful of special content like IMAX's nonfiction educational films and various 4D experiences to keep up the novelty. 4D experiences use 3D paired with moving parts like vibrating seats, water misters, and confetti or bubbles that actually fall on the audience to make it an immersive watch. These 4D showings are usually only around at things like theme parks and museums, so no water misters to really feel Brendan Fraser's mouthwash. Aside from these exceptions, 3D is mostly a thing of the past. 
but since it's been 100 years since the first 3D movie was shown, I don't think anyone can really predict when the trend of 3D will rise and fall again.